Hey everybody and welcome back to the uh, channel. Now this uh, video is all about uh, this little camera, the Minox 35 uh, GT. A 35mm camera and it's such a tiny little thing. In fact I think I'm right in saying it's one of the uh, smallest 35mm cameras ever made. Uh, not the smallest but one of them. And to give you an idea of its size, this is my Chamonix 4x5. Uh, it's an absolute beast compared to it, uh, as it would be because that's a 4x5 uh, camera and this is a 35mm. But it's a, a beautiful little camera and as soon as you, you pick one of these up you, you tend to fall in love with them. Uh, it's made out of plastic uh, so it doesn't sort of instill confidence using this camera roughly. I think you'd have to treat it with uh, tender loving care. But uh, it does feel quite solid. But one of the reasons I do like this camera is the fact uh, it's got a fold out lens and I love folding uh, cameras and uh, you fold it out like that and it reveals the lens. Now the lens on this is a, a colour Minotaur 35mm f2.8 and I'm told that uh, this lens is, is really really good. Uh, so I bought this camera about uh, a year ago, I've never used it so I'm going to go out today and try it out and I'll find out if that's true but uh, they do say it's a, a really really good lens. The camera is uh, auto exposure, uh, aperture priority. You don't have a lot of control with this camera um, other than uh, at the top of the camera there's a little button that you slide uh, push forward and it gives one stop extra exposure just in case you're in a backlight uh, situation but other than that uh, you don't have uh, much control but again uh, from the re reviews that I've read, uh, the meter which is situated around the lens on this is supposed to be uh, very, very accurate. So uh, I'll see when I've d developed the negatives. Uh, the camera's switched on. When you pull that down, it switches on, push it back and it, it turns the meter off. So it's, it's very, very well uh, designed. Uh, I'll take the camera off the, the tripod and Show you a closer look now. So as I say, the the uh, I'll just zoom in a little bit. The camera um, has a meter built in around the around the lens there. Um, the aperture ring is situated there, and you move that with this lever just to operate that. And then the focus scale focus is set using that. Now, this camera doesn't have any way of focusing through the viewfinder or um, uh, it hasn't got a rangefinder. You have to re rely on using the scale focus on the lens, setting that up. And I'll show you how to do that later on in the video, but uh, it's dead easy to do, So, uh, and, it, and, it, and hopefully it, it does work. Uh, it, but a lot of people don't have confidence when they're using scale focus, but believe me, if you set it right, it will work. So the top of the camera... As I said, we've got this little lever here. You press that forward and it gives you uh, one stop extra exposure. So it basically, in a, a backlit situation, it gives you that bit of uh, extra exposure just to open the shadows up a little bit. And then to turn it off, you just slide it that way. This is this button here is um, for testing the, the batteries to see if they're okay. Uh, you have to have the camera uh, open like this and wound on and then when the uh, when you press that button a needle inside the viewfinder uh, should go up to one 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 hundred twenty fifth of a second and stay there uh, if, it, if it does that means the battery is okay if it starts to drop below that you know the batteries uh, are on the way out you fit the batteries in that there you unscrew that cap uh, this camera was designed for uh, two mercury I think 1.5 volt batteries but we can't get mercury nowadays so I fitted in there uh, an adapter that uh, I can put two, two 1.5 volt batteries in and uh, it's supposed to re regulate the voltage so hopefully I'll get correct exposure. Uh, that uh, lever there is pull that across, uh, fire the shutter and it's a self time it lasts for about 10 seconds. We've also got a cable release uh, socket just at the side there Put that in and you can use a cable release. It's a double throw uh, wind on so if you listen, listen to the show, it's very quiet. 
and that's how you fire the shutter. It's got a frame counter at the top there. This is your rewind uh, crank. You lift that up when you've, um, if I can find out how to do it, that's it. You, you uh, Once you've finished uh, the roll, you use that to rewind the film back into the canister. You've got the hot shoe there. The back of the camera, we've just got the uh, the, re the wind on lever, to say two strokes. And then we've got the uh, viewfinder window. Now that's very clear and it does... Um, it has frame lines to help you uh, get your composition. Uh, the underneath of the camera, um, again pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got this button here, when you get to the end of the roll you press that and use the rewind crank to wind the film back. This is where you set your ISO on this camera. It's quite wide, it runs from ISO 25 to ISO 1600. Um, that lever there is a lever that you open the back with. So you push it so you see the red the red dot and then the whole back just pulls off. And that's the back of the inside of a camera. And I must say it's really really well built on the inside. So it's lovely metal work there. And then to put the back on you just simply slide it back back in place and then move that lever back over so the red dot doesn't show and we're all ready to go. So as I say, uh, uh, this camera is a really an auto auto cam auto everything, other than you having to set the scale focus. But once you've set that, uh, you just frame up inside the viewfinder and uh, uh, take the picture and let the camera do the meter and etc. And uh, you, you've nothing more to think about. So it's a great little camera. Uh, another thing what I like about the camera is it, it's it's tiny size. It's so small. But it's nice rounded contours on it and it'll fit easily into a, a coat pocket, a trousers pocket. It is so small and light. So I'm going to go out to, today. It's a, a bit of a miserable day but we have got fog uh, or, or mist. And uh, I'm going to go out with this and load the camera with Ilford HP5 uh, film. And I'm going to rate the, the HP5 at 800 ISO and develop that in, uh, in, in Diafine developer and uh, hopefully uh, by using that developer and, and the HP5 I'm going to get images of, that have got this grain in it to give it that uh, gritty look but also uh, uprating the film like that and in this soft light I might get some sort of classic old uh, looking type of, of images but uh, as I say I, I don't know what's going to happen because I, I've never used a camera since I bought it fingers crossed it works and I hope it does but it's a, a great carry anywhere camera is this. So that's it, the Minox uh, 35. Um, I'll get to the film loaded into the camera now and uh, set off up what we call the Chevin and see if we can get into the mist and take some pictures with it and uh, just uh, see how this camera performs. Well, it's not a brilliant sort of day uh, uh, for just walking about. It's a bit um, muddy, murky, but it's uh, misty and I hope, hopefully if I get a bit further up uh, onto the Chevin, I will come into some thicker mist. And I've, I've brought this little camera, a little uh, 35mm Minux, and I'm going to uh, just set it um, at scale focusing, I'll show you how I've done that. So for those that don't understand or don't know how to set the hyperfocal distance or scale focus on these type of cameras that uh, you don't have the ability to focus through the viewfinder, it doesn't have a range finder, it's all set on the lens. So on this camera, this is the aperture ring, uh, it runs from 2.8 round to f16. And then on the centre fixed scale, we've got apertures either side that are exactly the same of this red triangle. And this is the actual ring that focuses the distance. 
and this runs on this camera from infinity that's the infinity mark it's like a side on uh, number eight right down to three feet so let's say we want to set the hyperfocal distance and we're going to use f11 we'd set the infinity mark to the f11 mark on the fixed scale and then read from left to right so everything from seven foot to infinity will be in focus if we wanted to use uh, scale focus uh, at f11 we'd set the 20 foot mark line it up with the f11 on the fixed scale and then read off from left to right again so everything from roughly five feet to 20 feet would be in focus now when you're using this type of um, focusing system um, um, you know regulating or controlling the depth of field when you start to work at wider apertures let's say f4 the depth of field uh, narrows so again let's say we're going to be using the um, hyperfocal distance and we set the infinity mark to the f4 mark we can see that everything will be in focus from around about 21 feet to infinity whereas at f11 the depth of field has increased from uh, seven foot to infinity so you're getting more depth of field using the smaller apertures so i would say using these type of cameras you're always better to try and work at f11 or f8 or if you have to do uh, depending on how bright it is use f16 but i normally try and work between uh, f11 and f8 if you do want to work uh, at closer dis distances uh, using uh, wider apertures like f f4 or even the extreme wide open to f2.8 it becomes very difficult to uh, uh, sort of guesstimate the the distance and keep things in focus under those circumstances i probably advise using uh, a hot shoe mounted rangefinder like this one you mount, mount it on the hot shoe align the rangefinder and then the, whatever distance the rangefinder gives uh, set that on the lens and, and you probably uh, get better focus when you're using uh, the lens uh, at you know wide apertures and, uh, and closer to your subject so that's how to use uh, hyperfocal distance scale focus it's dead easy and once it's set you just uh, forget about it and just enjoy taking pictures so Basically, I just have to point the camera and press the shutter. That's all I have to think about. So, what I'm looking for now is some pictures in the mist. Which shouldn't be too hard. It seems to be getting a little bit thicker as I'm uh, going upwards. They're not very nice days for people who are, uh, you know, having a, a break from work over this Christmas period but uh, if you are a, a photographer these conditions can be ideal because you can get those lovely atmospheric pictures so we'll just see how this uh, little Minox camera performs never used it before I hope the the meter is going to be all right with the batteries that I've put into it but uh, we shall see so we'll see if we can find the first shot and I'm going to mount the uh, the GoPro onto the hot shoe of the Minox so you can see what I'm uh, um, thinking of or going to take a picture of so I believe it or not <laughs> down there in that dip is where I live at uh, Otley and we can't see a thing just uh, covered in mist the film I'm going to be using today is um, uh, Ilford HP5 and I'm going to rate that at uh, 800 ISO and uh, develop it in uh, diaphine. I've been uh, quite successful with that in, in bad weather, that combination of diaphine and HP5. So uh, I'm hopeful it'll uh, it'll turn out uh, okay. I think it might be a little bit grainy the uh, the pictures, but I don't mind that. It adds to the feel of the atmosphere of the pictures. So I found my uh, first shot. I'm going to take a picture of these uh, silver birch. And I'll probably do them the, uh, take the camera in the portrait orientation and just see how it turns out. I've got it set to f11 
um, so uh, I've got plenty of depth of field as long as I don't get too near. So we'll take the picture and see how this one turns out. Up, uh, this uh, little Minox camera is working okay. As I say, I've, ne I've never tried it since I bought it. It's such a lovely little light uh, camera to carry, 35 millimeter. You can just slip it into a small pocket, no weight. It's, uh, it's brilliant. So as I say, uh, I just hope it's uh, working okay. One of the problems I think you can have is with the batteries. The original ones were mercury batteries. Uh, this one I bought has an adapter where you put the 1.5 LR44 batteries, I think, inside. And uh, it's supposed to regulate the, uh, the the voltage. So we'll just see. And I'll just carry on walking. Uh, I want to start climbing a little bit higher. And then we'll get some uh, thicker uh, fog, hopefully. Now I quite like this picture because we're getting a little bit of nice contrast. We've got the trees uh, in the foreground which I'm going to place similar to what you can see on the GoPro here to the left hand side. And then we've got the trees receding in the mist in the background. And I'm, I'm going to try and include some of these uh, branches at the top in just to frame that tree in the centre of the frame. So we'll see how it goes. That's that shot. I haven't got a clue what shutter speed or I know what the aperture are but not the shutter speed. Uh, you've not a lot of lot of control with these cameras, in fact you've none. <coughs> you can control the ISO which I suppose will bring the exposure up or down. Um, you can um, there's a button on it that you can press to give it one uh, um, one stop over exposure. Uh, but that's about it, the, the rest is fully automatic. But that's the idea of this camera really, just to go out and take shots without having to think too much, so we'll just see if they turn out. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but uh, it's looking quite bright in the GoPro screen, but we'll just say I just like the uh, the dark shapes in the, against the fog. So I've just got to get the composition right and hold this camera steady now. In fact, I might set the aperture to f/8. Just give it another um, another increase in the shutter speed, and I should be able to handle all that. So I'm just going to push uh, this tree to the right hand side of the frame, just a touch, and take the shot. Little click and it's done. Right, we'll move on upwards. Now I might take another shot of this. Uh, but this time, I'm going to uh, get down lower and then go into the portrait format. I've no idea how this is going to show on uh, on YouTube, but that's how I'm going to take the picture. That's that one. Going up, nearly set top now. I've not been walking for a while and my gum that got me coming up there. That's the uh, Yorkshire saying by the way, my gum. And uh, it really got me legs in that one. I'm going to have to get that into a bit better shape I think. So we've got the path winding round, we've got a, a tree just showing through the mist and we've got this tree on the left. So I'm going to do this in the uh, vertical 
portrait format. So again, turn the lens. I'm just going to wait till these people get a little bit into the frame. That's it, got that one. Hope that turns out. Look at these. I took a picture of these in the in winter and just see what it looks like uh, with no snow. The last remnants of a snowstorm we had on Boxing Day. Anyway, this uh, picture quite like the uh, the angle um, intersecting from the bottom right going up to the top left and we have that tree in. so I'm at F8 and uh, I'm looking in the viewfinder it's telling me about 350th of a second so I'm absolutely fine I might stop the lens down to F11 Set the hyperfocal distance f11 so everything should be in focus apart from maybe a little bit in the bottom right hand corner that's that one move on try and catch those people that missed there Got that one. Always adds a little bit more interest if I can get somebody in it in these conditions. You know, sometimes when you're uh, sat at home in winter time and it's dull and it's miserable and you're lovely and warm. Uh, you want to go out, but you just can't push yourself to go out with your camera. Well, I'd say just push yourself a little bit harder, uh, get yourself out, uh, pick a camera, it doesn't matter what type of camera you're going to use, whether it's digital or film, uh, just pick a camera and walk out and challenge yourself uh, to try and come up with some pictures in the type of weather conditions on that particular day. I find it a challenge, I find it very hard sometimes to get myself up and motivated, but once I'm, I'm out, I really enjoy it. Now the weather today is not brilliant, it's really dull light. I've had to rate the HP5 at 800 ISO and um, uh, trying to find uh, pictures is, is very difficult because we've got this flat lighting. The one thing that I've got today is mist and that's what I'm trying to use to, con to, to, uh, to convey in, in the pictures this feeling of, uh, you know, of a, a, a darker day but uh, in, in this mist to give that sort of depth to the pictures. So. As I say, with the Minox, there's not many things you can adjust on it, really, other than the aperture. Um, so it's working in aperture priority, but you, you've no really uh, no control of the exposure. There's no manual exposure. You can set it to uh, one times. It'll over well, it, it'll uh, well overexpose the image by one stop, uh, which is handy in certain circumstances. I've used it once today, but other than that, uh, there's very little control. So you just leave it all to the camera which it sometimes feels a little bit strange to me. I'm, I'm using control uh, of the camera that I'm using. But we'll see, it's, uh, it's different and it's fun. Now I've just seen this picture. I took this in winter time, uh, last year in the, in the mist, but I'll try it with the Minox and we can compare it with the one that I took with the Mamiya 6. Uh, and this is the composition I'm gonna get, slightly different from the Minox viewfinder, but uh, I'm gonna get this wall round about here and then the curve going round and hopefully it'll pick up some of this uh, misty conditions. So wind the camera on, oh, it's wound on, and then compose it in the viewfinder. I've set the depth of field uh, in, at, eight, at F8, so I've scale focus, so I'm on F8, and it's giving me a range actually from, uh, let me have a look, uh, look at that scale, I'd say roughly uh, 
from about 10 feet to infinity. So we'll see how it goes. So if that's correct, part of the wall uh, at this bottom corner is going to be out of focus and then the rest should go into focus. See how that goes. Just going to try this uh, composition. We've got this tree with the leaves still on, and then uh, this path going over to the left there. Uh, try and get a little bit down as far as I can. My old knees are struggling here. I'll take that shot and see how that turns out. What am I on? 20. I've got about uh, three exposures left, so not doing bad. I will start making my way down as it's getting a little bit later and the sun get dark and I don't want to be caught in the dark up here. Beautiful out when it's like this though. All the noise seems to be dull. So it's really nice, I love it. Might just go on this top path. So I know then it forks off and it'll take me back down. test my uh, <laughs> judgment in uh, in distance so I set the minots to uh, uh, three feet that's its minimum that's its minimum uh, focusing distance I won't get any closer than that and then I've set the aperture to f4 and I'm going to try and focus on that that one I'm I'm guesstimating that's uh, three feet away so we'll just see <laughs> see if it turns out so I'm gonna have to turn the camera sideways for this picture Got to wind it on. And that's that one. See if uh, my uh, guesstimate is any good on distance. I doubt it. <laughs> so so flat the GoPro makes it look fabulous but it really is flat so when I edit these I'm gonna to have to add uh, you know I use what they call contrast grading that's how I work and I'm going to grade the contrast to uh, just get a little bit more oomph as you might call out of the pictures so for this one again I'm going to use it in the portrait uh, format and then uh, we'll just see how it see uh, see how it uh, how it turns out sometimes you know your eye sees things different to what the film will so i'm just hoping that the misty effects will be more apparent uh, on the film um, more than what the gopro is gopro sees it and what as my eyes see it so i'll take this picture now right that's that one done and i think the the path Uh, splits somewhere here. Oh, there we go, and then I'll start to head back down. It really. Uh, for me, th these sort of conditions are more suited sometimes to black and white. They get these really moody images. If I came up here on a really sunny day, you know, you, you, you're struggling with that contrast between the, the bright light that's coming into the uh, into the woods, etc., and the darker shadows. 
where in this sort of light it's more even well you have got that contrast but it's uh, it, it just tends to be more even you don't tend to struggle as much the fact that I'm using diaphine also makes this uh, um, easier for me because it's a compensating developer in other words when it's developing uh, it, it, it uh, exhausts itself in highlights quickly and they, they uh, tend to stop developing and um, you tend to get good highlight detail where it doesn't blow out and uh, a decent shadow detail provided you've got a, a good exposure well as I say with this camera I, uh, I don't have the control of that like I would with uh, some of the other cameras I have so uh, it's all down, down to how this uh, meter is working on this camera I didn't take that cut off back there I just thought I'd uh, I walk a little bit further there's a little pond there and just see if I can get anything uh, from this there's some reflections there I don't know we'll have a little walk down see but I have to be very careful it's very slippy here as you can probably get dafter <coughs> and open it backside whoops go down down here Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look as good as what it did when it was from the top obviously I'll see more of the reflection can't see very much here now nah nothing really inspired me there let's have a look these broken reeds are Uh, I think it might be okay, I'll just try it. So again, I'm going to set it to uh, the Hyper Focus Distal, I'm going to set the Infinity Mark to F8, and then I'll take the picture. I'll go further back. Get, that, get them grasses in the foreground. See how that goes. So that was the uh, the last photograph on the roll. I wasn't sure whether I put a, a 24 or 36 exposure in the camera, but it was obviously 24 because uh, it won't wind on any further. But I've, I've done enough now, it's, it's really getting miserable and a little bit too dark. Uh, so I'm going to go home, develop these as I say in diaphine. Uh, for, for those that don't know, diaphine comes in two parts, part A and part B. Part A is the developer that you soak it in uh, for a certain amount of time. And part B is the activator that actually activates and starts the development process. And the, as I say, the beauty of diaphine is that it's... Uh, it, it tends to exhaust itself in the highlights so you should get detail in those brighter highlights where you probably struggle with uh, uh, other types of uh, uh, developers uh, I developed mine for four minutes in A, four minutes in B and then uh, uh, set the temperature I always try and keep it to around about 75 degrees uh, and you can develop uh, higher than that or lower than that it doesn't really matter with diaphine so I'll get back now and uh, get this film developed and we'll see if they've uh, turned out. Oh no 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 look I'm trying to do a video. I'm trying look I'm trying to do a video, finish my video. So you'll be a good lad. Alright, I know you love me. You'll be a good lad and I'll give you a biscuit. Okay, say bye bye to everybody. Go on. <laughs> it's a lovely little fella. Right, that's the end of the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. The little uh, Minux camera worked absolutely beautifully. No problems. The, the lens is, is a, a really good lens on this. Uh, the the uh, auto, the, or the exposure on this camera 
uh, work flawlessly. Of all the pictures that I scanned, had very little uh, to do with them other than add uh, some contrast. So very pleased and would highly recommend one of these just as a walkabout camera. They are really, really good. So I didn't think I'd uh, get another video out uh, before the new year, but I managed to do this. So I'll take this opportunity to wish you all a happy new year. Uh, don't make yourself uh, too poorly, um, but hopefully uh, 2022 is going to be better than we've had the, the previous uh, two years with COVID, etc. Uh, so let's keep us fingers crossed. Now, if you like this video, please give me a like. Uh, better still, subscribe to my channel. If you've got uh, any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. And as I always say, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video. The Minux 35 GT.